right now on Justice. He is taking hate groups mainstream. Race. We will end illegal immigration. And immigration. The two topics that dominated the election this week. Tonight, we'll get into all of it with a panel of experts and backers of both campaigns. Plus, Chris Christian. I like him too. He's a little. Yeah. I just like him because he's kind of bossy and big and, you know, yeah, he's like that. He's, in your face. he's a good mobster. Kind of like you. You never know what will happen when Judge Janine hits the street. The best of street justice tonight. Justice starts now. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Melissa Francis filling in tonight for Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us. It was a busy week in the race for president ahead as at least one poll shows that Donald Trump's campaign shakeup may have paid off. The latest Real Clear Politics average shows Hillary Clinton's once double digit lead over Trump is now down to just over six points. It comes after a week dominated by headlines about Trump's immigration stance and both candidates trading accusations about race. Trump campaign senior advisor Boris Epstein joins us now. Uh, thanks for joining us. So the real clear political politics average moved in the right direction. He's still not leading anywhere. What do you do well, about that? That average is actually over 20 plus days. So that incorporates the time in early August when the polls were not so favorable. Now you're looking at the UPI, UGov, Gravis polls, all polls where we're either up or tied. LA Times poll were up in the tracking poll as well. So the polls are definitely going in the right direction for this campaign. Yeah. And it's because the people are seeing the binary choice, Melissa, between Hillary Clinton, who is a lifelong failure and a liar, and Donald Trump, who's bringing real, fresh ideas. Okay. They don't America. reflect the last few days. And that's where we saw this shift into a conversation about immigration and then, you know, some really ugly stuff on race. How do you think that will shake out? Because a lot of people say the race debate doesn't turn out that well for Trump. It tends to, no matter what the message is or what the truth is, that's a conversation that benefits Democrats. You know, it's interesting about the race debate. This all started, the Democrats started slinging this mud at us when Donald Trump and our campaign began even a more concerted outreach to the African American community, which is a good thing. And it's almost revolutionary for a Republican campaign to do so. And the Democrats, of course, are paranoid. They're scared. And that's why they're using these dirty tactics. Like Tim Kaine yesterday comparing the Trump campaign and the 14 million supporters in the primaries and millions and millions more now to the KKK. Who would you say that message is really aimed at? Because there are some people looking at the campaign that say, if you combine that with the immigration, what this is really about is calming down fears of moderates who think Donald Trump is too out there, that it's not really about reaching out per se to the black community because it's going to be very hard to get any solid votes there given where he is, that this is really about can, you know making people feel better about him as being more moderate in general. Absolutely not. This campaign is reaching out to all communities. And as far as the African-American community goes, of course we're reaching out to him. Donald Trump will be going to Detroit, going to the inner cities, making speeches in front of African-Americans and speaking to African-Americans just he has been for this whole campaign, but specifically over the last several weeks, talking about the issues that matter. 26% yeah. of African Americans live in poverty in this country. That is unacceptable. That needs to be fixed. And whose fault is that? Barack Obama's and Hillary Clinton's. She cannot be allowed to be president. So another criticism of this strategy is that it's focusing on a specific community when maybe at this point what it makes the most sense to do is go focus in swing states, that he should have more time on the ground in places that would make a difference. Why is he in the inner city talking about that when he could be down in Florida? He could be in other places where he needs to make up ground. What about that? Well, he's in Iowa today. Listen, campaigns are a busy time, and you could be in three states in one day. So that is absolutely part of the plan, part of the strategy. So Donald Trump is going all over this country, and he's speaking to all Americans because he's going to be the president for all, all Americans, not Hispanic Americans or African Americans, all Americans. Do you think that this represents the way we're going to see the rest of the campaigns? Because for those of us who watch it very closely because it's our job and we're there every day, he is at rallies now, but he's reading off prompter, something he didn't do before, but he's doing it a lot more naturally. You know, it, it doesn't, at first when he switched the prompter, there was a lot of criticism that it seemed stiff and that he was going to, you know, maybe um, alienate some of the folks that liked his off the cuff banter. What do you think about where he is now and will he keep it like this, do you think, for a while? I think he's doing a great job and it's a combination of using the teleprompter and his own personality. He's the most rela relatable candidate this country has seen since Ronald Reagan and that's why he did so well in the primaries, beating 16 very qualified senators and governors. And that's why we're doing so well in the 
the polls now, and will, that's why he will win on November 8th. At the beginning of the week, the conversation was a lot about Hillary Clinton, the emails. The AP came out with that very hard story showing that more than half of the people that made it to her office and got to see her as Secretary of State had given money to the foundation. The Clintons were able to pivot away from that by the end of the week and turn the conversation to this race thing. Do you think it's important to get back to this idea of the foundation being corrupt? Absolutely, 100%. How do you do and that? And now there's evidence that the Clintons used BleachBit, that bleaching software which is erases emails that I didn't even know about, and right. I'm an attorney, that's the things I, I do know about. This software is so rare, so rarely used, that it's an obvious example of them being paranoid. And now there's evidence that they used it after this investigation began, which is obstruction of justice. Yeah. And the American people need to know about it. We'll make sure that they're not being distracted by the Clinton smear machine, the Democrat left, from yeah. the key issue that the Democrat candidate for president obstructed justice, she lied to Congress, she perjured herself, mm -hmm. and she's been hiding the truth okay. from American people for decades. And Julian Assange is out there as well. That's another chapter. Boris, thank you so much for, for joining us. Me. All right, joining me now, with a slightly different take on the battle for the White House, of course, and who should win. Former advisor to Hillary Clinton's 2008 campaign, Democratic strategist Richard Goodstein, thanks so much for joining us. Sure, Melissa. Happy um, to be along with you. What, what do you think about the tone that the campaign on both sides took at the end of the week, this really pivoting to race? It does seem like one that nobody wins. I question or challenge the suggestion that it's a pivot as regards Donald Trump. Let me tell you what Republicans said about Donald Trump, that he was a racist, bigot, xenophobe, misogynist, and con artist. That's See, but, what, but you're, his, go, you're going, what you're going right back about to him. what the campaign's doing no, 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 at the end no, of the no, week. No, so, but, I'm but, just saying, but I'm just it saying, just pivot, hang on, Melissa. Do you, think, do you think, so you must think it helps Hillary Clinton then, and certainly maybe it distracts from all of the evidence that's coming out and the corruption within the foundation. Listen, let's talk about the foundation for let's. one second. Yeah. I hope this campaign is about the comparison between the Clinton Foundation, which provides HIV AIDS drugs, climate change relief, malaria, 80 90% reduction in the cost of, of medication, okay, childhood obesity, women's empowerment, versus the Trump Foundation, which bought a Tim Tebow signed helmet and gave money to his kids' if, private if school. If the Clinton Foundation that does debate, all that please. good work, why does only 10% of the money flow through to those good works? Why no, no, does no. only 90% of it stays within the foundation? Why does Charity because Watch say... Because it's a different model, Melissa. Can, yeah, it's not a charity. No, 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 That's no, no, what Charity no, Watch no, says. No, please, listen to me. It's a different model. It's not like the Ford Foundation, which itself gives money to good causes. The Clinton Foundation hires people to go into Rwanda and South Africa and so forth to actually deliver services, the malaria drugs, the HIV AIDS medication. That's what they're doing. So this is a myth. Why does Charity and Watch say when they look at the business model, they can't make heads or tails of it? It is not a because charity. It's so, different. so they can't rate it. Because it's so different. Again, it's not the Ford Foundation. It's not the Rockefeller Foundation, which has a certain model. You apply Robin for grants. Robin Hood here in New York passes a hundred percent of what it gets what it gets in onto its good works. For no, other no, no, charities, we are Melissa, always advised sorry. never go with anyone who's consuming so, so much. So I don't know whether you're not understanding what I'm saying, or you really don't want to believe it. The fact is, the Clinton Foundation I, I has a different model. I don't believe what you're saying model. because I read well, what Charity Watch said, and that, I looked at the documents, no, listen, and I can do math. That's record. why I don't believe what you're saying because I matter can of public actually record. do math. If you don't believe your eyes, which you read, I'm sorry, I believe but that's what the a IRS public record. Wrote. I looked at the IRS records, and they're the ones that say that only 10% is going to charity, and the rest of it that's is staying because, within the organization. Because they're hiring people yeah. to deliver the services. The Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, mm -hmm. they don't do that. The Clinton Foundation does. And how, you know what? You they're providing 11.5 million people with HIV AIDS medication that wouldn't have it. The Rockefeller Foundation does not okay. do anything like that. How, how do you battle back against the AP report when it shows that more than half of the people who she chose to have meetings with had given money to the foundation. All the emails as you follow them, as they go from the head of the foundation into the secretaries of state's office and say this person had tried to get in through the normal channels. They are a special friend. They are a good friend of ours. Please see them. And it's somebody, a foreign national who has business before the State Department. Do you understand that when people look at those emails, they feel like the State Department was bought and paid for and they're really concerned about it? Yeah. So. Um the AP story has been radically debunked no, because it hasn't. what it didn't include, what it didn't include, 
was the thousands of meetings that she had um, in addition to these few. And look, those were mandatory AP meetings that were her job. That was that her job. AP no, that no, no, was no. her job. Those that, were the meetings well, that me she what, had tell me, to have. Let me ask you something, the meetings Melissa. that we're talking about, hang on, the meetings that we're talking about here are the optional ones where she had discretion so tell me to something. do it or not. The AP sorted Ely out the Vizel ones where it was her discretion. Ilya is a famous Holocaust survivor. Ilya Vizel is a famous Holocaust survivor. Do you think it's a kind of abuse of your position you, you as Secretary keep going, of State? You guys go to, to that one example well, okay. because you know the numbers are against you and you can't obfuscate How about Melinda Gates? Gates, a world-renowned philanthropist. How about Mohammed Yunus, a Nobel Prize those, winner? Those are the, the same list goes three on. names that the Clintons said to everyone they saw because they knew the math doesn't help them. So they go to those three names. Are you at all worried about Julian Assange and the fact that he told Megyn Kelly that he's got another shoe that's going to fall on Hillary Clinton? <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. Uh, Julian Assange, a, a, um, who, who has been charged with rape, um, is somebody who was reviled on this very network because of releasing state secrets. And now there's this worshiping, please, Julian, It's not a worshiping, I'm asking something. you, I, 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 there are a, a lot of people on this network think that he is a criminal and he is a really right. bad guy. It doesn't change yes. the fact that he's going to release these documents. He is trafficking in stolen goods. You know goods, who has more to be concerned about? Wait, really? hang on, but how are you yeah. gonna battle back? It doesn't change what he puts out there and the yeah. damage it could do regardless of the source. Do you if worry there, about there's that? There's two candidates running for president. Both have concerns, I guess, potentially about releases. Yeah. Donald Trump's getting his tax returns out there. That's the person who's really at risk. Hillary Clinton okay. has had thousands of her emails already put out there, and they're a big bore. Richard Goodstein, thank you for joining us. You thank are a you, good Melissa. advocate, my friend. Appreciate thank you for doing it. it. Thank you. That Appreciate was fun. All right.